In our second Facebook ad course video, we're going to talk about ad creation and setting permissions. This is one of the most common hiccups we see when working with a new client. Setting up permissions can be very tricky to get the hang of, but once you have them right, they're going to be right. This may be something that you're going to struggle with, but we're going to show you how you can add people and partners to your business manager. We're also going to teach you how to create a campaign and how to budget this effectively. We're also going to then talk about the different Facebook audiences you can use. We kind of categorize these as cold and warm audiences, and we're going to talk about these, the differences and how you can create them on Facebook. And then finally, we're going to talk about testing and optimizing your ad visuals and why this is important. You don't want to run ads just because you like them. You need to see why your audience likes them and what they like so that you know you are giving them the best ads possible. So let's jump in in how we set permissions on Facebook. So when you come in, you'll probably see your ads managed like this, but you will want to access your business settings. So I'm going to use the cog in the top right hand corner to get here. So as I've said before, you'll see that this is your business manager on the right here. So just double check you're in the right one. You'll then see all of the people that are in your business manager at the moment. If you want to add anyone to your business manager, you just need to select add here, enter the email and then set what access you want them to have. If you only want them to kind of look at things and not change anything, then you'll want to give them employee access. But if they need to edit people and edit accounts, then you'll want to set them admin access. But as I said, all you do is enter the email in here and it will send them a notification that they need to access and say that they want to be a part of this. You then also have partners. So partners is kind of where an agency would come in. So if I go down and find the blend uh, business uh, partner id if i go into business info here you can find it here so you just need to copy this and uh, into your clipboard and then go back to partners and then when you hit add on partners you can either ask a partner to share their assets with you or you can add a partner and share your business assets so if you were looking to add an agency to your business manager, you would come in to add here and you would want to give a partner access to your assets. So it pops up like this and all you have to do is copy and paste the business ID in here and then they will be sent a notification saying that they have access. Now at the moment, this will come up with a red flag as we are using our own business ID but you wouldn't see this if you were doing it for yourself. Here is the audience overview page uh, and you can create different audiences from here. So to create an audience, obviously there's a big blue button here. You can create a custom audience, a lookalike audience or a saved audience. Custom audiences are usually created from a source that Facebook knows. So this could be from your website. This could be a direct customer file like a CSV of your customer list or your mailing list, an activity if you have it, an offline activity if you have it. A videos means that you can create an audience of people who have viewed your videos on your Facebook page or ad account and use a audience to retarget them. You can also retarget people on how they've engaged with your Instagram page, how they've engaged with your Facebook page, if they've engaged with events, your lead form or your instant experience. If we want to do one that's based on website, we're going to go into website. So again, just always make sure that this is your pixel. And if you open this, you can see that you have different categories. If you want to target all website visitors ever, then just click all website visitors. If you want to create a purchasing audience, then you can create purchasing. If you want to create an audience of people who have added to cart, you can create an audience of people who have added to cart. So when we do this, I always just make sure that I name it the date, name it what the audience is, and then I always put in bracket what the time scale is. So that's how we would make a custom audience. Now, a lookalike audience is what we would refer to as a cold audience. Uh, and cold audience are people who haven't interacted with your website before or don't know who your brand is. Lookalike audiences are also made from a warm data source as such. So if I just go into look like audiences here, you have to select an existing audience to make it. So if I just go for the all customers to date, this is gonna be my origin source. 
So it means that anybody who is in this lookalike audience are going to have probably similar traits, similar interests, similar demographics to the people who have purchased from me. You then have the different locations that you want to target. If, for example, you are a US-based business, then you'll want to probably put United States in here and it will match 1% of your audience to your all customers here. You can also set different percentages. So the higher percentage you go, the less likely they're going to be. Um, there was a rumor that since Facebook removed third party data sources, that the 1% look like audiences work for me as well. So kind of a common thing that we do is we just create three of them all in one hit and we test them from zero to 1%, 1% to 2% and 2 to 3%. And we just see how those perform by comparing them together and then we keep the one that performs best. But that's how you would make a lookalike audience. And these are going to be the ones that you would probably use in your acquisition campaign. And then finally, you have saved audiences. And saved audience is basically what you see in the ads manager in how you can create detailed targeting. You can add detailed targeting to a lookalike audience or a custom audience. You can just do this afterwards, which I will show you how. But if, for example, you were trying to create an audience of who you think your competitors are, then you might put business competitors, if I can spell it right, as your title. Uh, and then you may put some of the interests that you list below. Interested in clue. So you can use a custom audience as the base for this, but we don't often do this. You can set the location, so you can put it to anyone who's been in the location, people who live there, people who have recently been there, and people traveling. Most of the time, you're probably going to target people who live in the location. Um, you can then choose the countries that you want to target. So if you want to target somewhere different, you can change that here. You can change the age range as well. Uh, this is obviously on the broadest setting at the moment, but you just scroll and select these when you need to. You can select obviously if you wanted to target women, men or all, um, and then you have languages. So you don't necessarily need to put languages in. Uh, okay, so a good example of this is if your ad is written in English and you are targeting the United Kingdom, you don't need to put English as your language because it already is in English. The only time you probably put a language in here is if you were targeting France, for example, as a country, but you wanted to target people in France who are English. That's when you would probably put English language in here because it means anyone who speaks English will see your ad and therefore they'll actually be able to read it. And then as we go further down, we have detailed targeting and this is where you would put the interests. So obviously, as I said, uh, my audience is interested in clothing. So I'm going to type in clothing and there you go, it pops up straight away. Uh, just double check when you're doing these that you are selecting the right ones. Sometimes you can have something that is both a business, a job and an interest. So uh, Facebook will just categorize these. Uh, I think a really good example as well is if I type in nursery as in like a child's nursery. So you come up with nursery itself um, as an interest to so people who are interested in nursery, maybe like one that you can take your kids to during the day. But then further down, you have nursery as in the room. So the room that you probably have in your home. So you just need to double check those to make sure that you are targeting the right thing. But if I go back to clothing and just pop that in, you can then carry on browsing for others or you can go into suggestions and Facebook will suggest other targeting that you may want to use. Um, so you can pop all of these in here if you want, or if you've got some ideas, you can put those in as well. You then have the exclude people or narrow audience. So at the moment, if I go into suggest and pop all of those in like that, it means that any one of my audience so far only has to match one of these interests. If I want them to be interested in clothing and shopping, I then go into narrow audience and hit shopping. And they would now both have to match both clothing and shopping and therefore the audience amount would go down. Equally, if I had a competitor that I didn't want to target, then I can exclude people. So if I just put in Topshop, for example, see if they come up, which they do. As I said, you have the employers and the interests. So if I put in interests, now anyone who likes Topshop has been excluded from the audience. 
You then can add a connection type, which is usually people associated with a page, an app or event. So you exclude people who like your page. You can add people who like your page and you can also find friends of people who like your page. Um, so these can be quite helpful, but they can narrow targeting down too much. Um, we generally, for an acquisition kind of campaign, a saved audience, especially for like a brand new business, is very helpful. And we like to keep them very broad so that we can get people to the website. And then when we move into remarketing, we have the kind of data from the website. That's when we kind of look at the size of the audience. And we know that obviously 20 million people for remarketing is not going to go very far. So we would probably aim to have an audience between one and 10,000 for remarketing. But acquisition could be anywhere between probably 10,000 and 100,000. Or even bigger than that, it really depends on the person and what they are trying to achieve. But once you do all this, you can obviously save this and then you can now use them in your ads. So you just pop that in here. Um, obviously, at the moment, I've got the website visitors in here. But if I wanted to change any of the uh, kind of demographics here, I can just pop those in here so I can make sure that anyone of my website visitors is also interested in clothing, for example, or women's clothing, which I have sent and then obviously there's just a few more bits down here, which you can see in the saved audience. But for myself, I just like to have that separate and then I can literally just throw the audience in knowing that it's ready and I don't have to do anything. You do sometimes get little warnings like this, which say that your ads are too strict, as in your audience is gonna to be too small. This doesn't always have too much of an issue, but it's good just to have a look at these notifications when they pop up. You then have placements uh, where you have automatic and you can edit them. If I just go into edit, I can show you what placements are. So these are going to be where your ad is seen on Facebook. Obviously, you can put Instagram on there as well and Messenger. We tend to recommend going with automatic placements because Facebook has a very good algorithm in telling you uh, what uh, placements work well. So what it does basically is it will first start by showing your ad in all placements and then as it gets more and more results it will start changing the budget so that goes towards the placements that have performed well and it's kind of a step that you don't have control over but Facebook is also really good at doing it itself so that's how we recommend those. The only time we'd really edit placements is if we want to see if there's a significant difference between Facebook or Instagram or if we really don't want to target someone on Messenger for example. So we then scroll down and you have the budgeting here as well. We obviously as I said do not do the budgeting down here but what we will do is we will set the end and start date. So usually, as I said, our lifetime budgets are a month. So we would then set this for a month's time, which automatically does anyway. And this just means that now our $500 will be spent over a period of a month instead of just all being spent in one hit. You also have the optimization for ad delivery. Uh, so if we go into here, then you can see uh, what events you have. Um, so you can have others, which is like link clicks and impressions. So link clicks is basically going to just encourage anybody to click on your ad. They could click on the image. They could click on your Facebook page. They could click on your CTAs. They don't actually have to go to the website. And impressions is designed just to get as many people as possible to your website. Uh, if we were doing remarketing, we'd probably go for the conversions event here. Uh, and we would be able to change what optimization we want. We probably first start as purchases as we want people to purchase. But if you find people aren't purchasing, you may want to change this to add to cart just to kind of make it less of a big commitment as such. So Facebook will target people to add to cart first. And then once you get the add to cart, so you could then go on to purchases. So you can change those here as well. And that's sort of it for your audience. And then you come into your ad creation. So when I first start Facebook ads out for a person, I will want to test every single type of ad format possible. Uh, and this is because I want to see which ad format works best. So at the moment we can see we can have a carousel ad, we can have a single image and we can have a collection. So in the ad name, I would probably name this one carousel, another one would be called single image and another one would be called collection. 
And then if we scroll down, you then have the ad creation. Because I am in the catalog sales objective, it's automatically selecting products for me. Uh, this is just my view. You would probably see something completely different if you put this in here. Uh, other views will show a grid with boxes where you can enter your own photos as well. Um, but what's brand new at the moment is this little feature here. And basically, if I go into mobile marketplace, this is how my ad would look in marketplace. Uh, but you can add your text here. Uh, you can customize images if you have the um, catalog sales objective. Uh, and then you can add links and furthermore. What you will also want to do here is you will want to build a URL parameter. So you have one up here as well, but we use this bottom one here as it basically does everything for the ad overall. And what you'll see is that this is how we kind of define ads in our analytics on Google. Uh, so how we name them is campaign source is always Facebook because that's what the, ad, the, the Facebook the source is. Uh, and then our campaign medium is usually an ad. And then we'll just name these after the campaign name and the ad set name so that we know the difference. And then you just need to add the parameter and apply. And this just means now that you will be able to track how this ad performs in your Google Analytics. So let me just go into here and flick into the traffic objective quickly and I'll show you how the uh, visuals are different here. So now you can see this one says single image or video, so you can put both of those in here. So for this uh, ad example, we probably have a carousel ad, single image, a single video and a collection. You can also add instant experiences uh, and instant experiences for us, we like to treat them as mini landing pages. So if I go into here uh, and just click on this template here, basically when you click on the ad, it will open up this page where the person will be able to scroll through and have a look at everything. You can set this to show different products. You can have buttons as well. And it's kind of, we like to make this reflect the website that we are working on. Oh, there we go. So you could also test those. And then as you go further down, you can obviously see now that you can add an image or a video here. So you just need to either upload an image or browse them yourself. Uh, we always recommend making your videos ahead of time uh, and, your, and your images ahead of time, just so that you know what you are going to be using for your ads. And this just makes this creation process a lot easier. You can then obviously add your text here and you can edit the background of your stories if you wish. You need to add your headline here. So this is what you're going to grab people's attention with. And then, as I said before, you're going to build your URL parameter as well. And then once you've finished this and you've created them all, you're going to hit confirm. It will come up and probably give you a review that you can look at and just make sure that you've named everything correctly and set everything correctly. It will then save this as a draft and then you'll be able to publish this and your ad will be live. So there's a lot of information there to digest. Um, please feel free to come back to this video as many times as possible to help you with your ad creation process. Till the next course video, you just need to make sure that you have looked at your ad account and made sure all the permissions are set up correctly. I then recommend that you divide out your marketing budget for a month and then use the percentages recommended to divide it between your acquisition, remarketing and retention campaign. Then think about what audiences you'd like to create. I would write a list out of all your cold audiences, so your look-like audiences you could have, and then the warm audiences you could have, which would be your website visitors and your add to baskets. Obviously, for attention, that's going to be your purchasing audience. Then you should look at the visuals you're going to create. So when you have created your list of audiences, think about the types of ads you want to put in there. Like I said, I'd recommend going with a different format first, just to test how these go and then go into looking at single images and then the kind of variations of those images that you could have or videos, depending on what works best. In the next video, we are going to look at the Facebook pixel, which I know sounds very scary, but it's really important that you set it up correctly and can test it. So until then, stay tuned and I will see you all in the next video.